Hello everyone, thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today we're going to do five bolt carrier group physicals. These are five Knights Armament Company sand cutters. All of these are newer production based on some conversations I had with some fellows at Knights Armament and my Facebook group. We do have one of the older variants that have no logo engraved on it, but they did say that it is a Knights Armament bolt carrier group. It's not a copy or forgery or an off-branded version they produced as one of their units. This particular unit that is not engraved, if you look really closely, you'll see that it's equipped with YFS fasteners. They used those for a very brief period of time. They didn't report any issues with them, but they did move away from them because of the issues that they're aware of in the industry with YFS fasteners and the carrier key or gas key. So the owner of these five carriers, he wants me to give these a thorough checkup and he also wants me to replace all five carrier keys with these five ones that I have here and some Michigan's Ox optimized carrier key screws. Nothing wrong with these but the owner wanted some extra insurance that um, they weren't going to come loose. The fasteners were up to what he was looking for so we're going to replace those and uh, see what's going on. One of these carriers is equipped with an LMT enhanced bolt so we're going to check that out too while we're in these five carriers and we'll go ahead and get started. First we'll get into the LMT bolt and get that out of the way. Let me grab my bolt disassembly tool. Actually this is the wrong one. This is my extractor spring tool. Firing pin retaining pin. Let's take our firing pin out. I'm not sure who the firing pin or the retaining pin or the cam pin is from. The owner did engrave them so he can orient them in the same fashion. This is the LMT enhanced bolt. You look really closely, it has a different extractor design. Pop our extractor pin out. And you'll see two springs under here. See the small springs? So instead of having one stiffer spring, you have two smaller springs. If you look at the bolt face, it does have a rounded ejector edge. They also made some other changes to it. It has modifications or cuts right here in the bolt. And it also has a modification to the lug on the opposing side of the extractor. Um, I think they refer to this as load balancing. So basically what you'll run into with some bolts is since the extractor removes one of the lugs, these two lugs right here experience a great deal more stress than the remaining lugs in the bolt. So you'll usually see one of these two break off if the bolt is going to have a failure. So what they did was they took the lug right here and on the back they removed material so this is actually a non-functioning lug from the way it's been described. I haven't gauged these out to confirm that, but that's the way that it's been explained to me. And it does seem to work because I've never seen an LMT with sheared lugs. So, uh, pretty intelligent design if you ask me, but we're going to go ahead and get into it, gauge it, see if we detect any problems. And then we'll move on to the nice armament setups. We see that the little springs came out right there. Those are for the extractor. They just drop out. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll grab the extractor first since it's a proprietary design. We're going to test the pin. It moves freely. It's really slick. It does have a coating on it. <clears throat> Not fond of having coating extractors, but the extractor claw on this is very sharp. Let's get the extractor gauge. Passes the go side. No go side appears like it goes in, but it's actually not. There's a shallow groove there, and the extractor gauge does not go into there, so let me try to go to the no-go side again. It looks like it's dropping in, but it's not. If it was, I wouldn't be able to push it away like this. Let me try to focus. We're having camera problems. There we go. So if it was failing, when this went in here, I wouldn't be able to push it away, if that makes sense. So it's not failing. 
we're still good. All right. So the extractor passes. Springs wouldn't look good. Cam pen, it's not nice armament that I'm aware of. Has a little bit of wear on it. Nothing that is dramatic. Let's test the fit into the bolt. Very good fit. Almost no wobble at all. Our fire pin retaining pin looks good. We'll set that off to the side. And since our extractor passed, we'll set that off to the side as well. Let's check firing pin movement. Nice and smooth. Let's check protrusion. Point zero three one. We're good with protrusion. Very good. Let's check out the tip of the firing pin. Any more camera problems? Firing pin tip looks good. We'll set that off to the side. Let's check for magnetism. Bring our firing pin back. We have nothing. Let's check our extractor. Nothing. Let's check our bolt. Nothing. I did check the ejector off camera. I will use a brass punch to show you that it does have good tension. Very smooth range of motion. No binding, grinding, grittiness, nothing like that. You usually feel a little bit of an almost setup, so it's probably a conjunction of the, the finish that they're using and the final process of honing out the bore, drilling out the bore. Um, nothing's binding though, very smooth. The bolt face looks good. The overall finish on it looks fantastic. You can see a ring on it where the primer had etched it a little bit from firing or test firing. Nothing to be concerned about. Generally, you don't want something to catch really bad on that. But that's only in the finish. That's not a deep groove at all. All right, let's go ahead and check our gas rings and our headspace. So we'll do our gas ring test. Let's put this up on its face. And they pass without a problem. Test barrel. Let's do our 223 go gauge. Passes with ease. I'm banging into a lot of stuff today. Don't know why. 556 go. Passes. And 556 field. We don't want this to rotate. And it doesn't. Very good. Set this off to the side. All right, so headspace passes. Let's check our firing pin hole. Takes the go side. Does not take the no-go side. So overall, the LMT enhanced bolt passes with Flying colors. Let's get this back together. There's only two types of bolts, well, actually three, that I've never seen fail. Um, one is the LMT Enhanced. The other is the SR15 Nice Armament type bolts. They have a modified lug design. And uh, believe it or not, JP bolts. But those are normally used on non defensive applications, usually not seeing. Um, really high pressure NATO spec ammo as a steady diet through them so I wouldn't say that that's necessarily um, a glowing endorsement saying they are superior to either the Knights Ornament or the LMT but it's something I'd like to bring up in the video since I've never seen a failure with one but fantastic bolts very pricey they are proprietary when it comes to the extractor and bolt but overall really good alright let's get into these carriers here we have five here. 
They all seem similar except for that one that I pointed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with doing our regular gauging and then we're going to move over for the last test. We're going to check our reverse braking torque for these to see if any of them cut loose. Um, even though we're replacing the gas keys, let's go ahead and gauge them. This one takes the green side, very tight. Oh, look at that. Slightly oversized. Doesn't go completely in. So we have one that takes my no-go for the gas key. This one doesn't. So that one's good. That one takes it a little bit. In order for it to be a total fare though, it has to swallow it almost completely or a majority of the way. So this one is okay. Again, barely took it, so that one's alright as well. And this is the one with the YFS fasteners. Takes that one. That one just slightly begins, so we'll try this one again. Just barely. That's completely fine. This one's about, let's see, what is that? A little about halfway. So not great, not a complete failure. This one, maybe a quarter of the way. That one's not a problem at all. And then this one, maybe about a third of the way. So those three I'd be fine with if this was mine here. It takes it at least halfway. I wouldn't like to see that on my gun. Doesn't mean it's not going to work though. It's just a little bit inefficient. This one though, eats it almost all the way. So this one I would say is very close to being a failure as far as my gauging goes. It doesn't mean this won't work in the gun that you put in. It just means it's not going to work on a optimized port gun or a gun with a non-efficient gas system. So we do have some gas key dimensional issues here. Let's go ahead and check our alignment of the gas keys. That one passes. That one passes. Pass. issues. Very good. Alright, let's check our carrier three bores. Oh, there's something I forgot with the LNT. I didn't do the bolt tail. Hope that can pass just fine. Alright, let's check and make sure that we don't have a blockage in the carrier key. Good there. We're also going to inspect these with the bore scope. This one's good. Good. Back hurts. That's what happens when you're working in your socks in your shop, standing on the concrete floor. The cat's not out here today, so you're not going to hear any meowing. He's grouchy. He didn't want to come out. I think he has cabin fever. All right, let's check our three bores. First, I'm going to do the first or the bolt shoulder or bolt support run for all five of them. Let's see what we get. So first green gauge goes. Second green gauge goes. First yellow. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, mm, barely. So we have green there. I'm not going to say that that's yellow because it really wasn't. First green, second green. Oh, we'll take the yellow here. All right. Let's see if this one will go. We'll just switch over to a look. That one took the yellow. Took the first yellow. All right. So we'll keep these two here as green. That one's in the yellow range. Let's see what this one does. Oh, that one took the yellow, the first yellow. 
Second yellow, didn't take it. So those two were equal. Let's do this last one. Try this yellow one, don't like that one. Took that one. So we have three that took the first yellow gauge for the bolt shoulder support. These two are in the green range. So a difference of about 0 .001 between these two and these three. All right. Next, we're going to move on to the gas ring run. So let's see what we get. First green, second green. Won't take the yellow. Let's see if we can get the yellow to go on on this one. Won't go. Oh, that one started. That one started. And that one started. Let's see if I can get into the red with any of these. No. 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 So these are behaving about the same. These two are green and green. These three are yellow and yellow for the shoulder and gas ring run. So let's try the bolt tail. See what we get. First green. Oh, I went to the red. Second green. And it's tight. I don't think it's going to take the yellow. Let's try it though. Nope. So let's move to this next one. We won't even go through the other ones. Let's see if this one takes the yellow. It starts it, but it won't take it all the way through, so I don't consider that accepting it all the way. So these two nice carriers, green, green, green. All right, let's move to these other ones that were about 0 .001 slightly larger. Let's see if it'll take the yellow on these. No. Nope. And no. Let's go back to the green. Yes. Pass a little tighter and pass. So what we have here is we have these three carriers are behaving exactly the same. So we have two with the logo and one without the logo. These three have yellow for the bolt support, yellow for the gas ring run, and green for the bolt tail. So this means they're slightly gas inefficient if you consider the gas ring run. Not a failure though, it just means that they're going to be less uh, efficient on guns that are lightly gassed. These two examples, however, both have the nice Roman logos on them, and they have green, green, and green. So these are more gas efficient than these three examples here. So only a slight difference of about .001 between this and this, and this and this on these. They're all the same for the bolt tail. So very consistent in my opinion. Alright, let's go ahead and look at the inside of the three bore with the bore scope. So we'll turn this on. I'm going to line this up over here. Actually let me go down all three of them. So these are the first two that we had really good dimensions out of. And then we have these three which are just slightly larger. Line them all up in a nice pretty row. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a look on the camera. Focus this. There we go. Very clean finish in here. This is the bolt shoulder or bolt support run. There's some oil there. Now we're into the gas ring run. A little bit of oil there. Those lines that you're seeing is just electrical interference that's happening from the shop lights. The finish in here is extremely good though. And then we have, try to get some more light here. Try to focus it a little better. We have some dirt. A 
I'm going to run a swab in here to clean this out so we can get a good, clean view. It's not going to be easy to capture on camera looking at this visually, but the finish and the inside of these look fantastic with the naked eye. I'm going to get the light in here and see if you can see it better. Not really. But the finish looks great. All right, let's try again. Try to focus this a little better. All right. Now we're all cleaned up. That's our gas ring run. Looks like these are scratches. Overall finish is very good though. A little bit of oil there, that's what that yellowish looking substance is. And then here's our gas ring run. Still a little bit of oil in there that I couldn't grab. I missed it, but overall very smooth finish right here, look. Fantastic. Let's move to number two bolt. Now that first one was one of the ones that gauged that green across the board. Here's number two. Shoulder or support looks fantastic. Very clean. Now we're into the gas ring run. Here's the step up. There's our gas exhaust ports. I may not translate well, but this again has a very clean finish. Let's go to the Little tail run now. I'm running into a wall here, and there we go. This one is not as clean. You can see some machining marks. Not terrible. And that one doesn't look too good right there. The overall finish of that area is the least important, though. The area that can be critical when it has to be smooth is the second run or the gas ring run. That is what interfaces with the gas rings and having a rough bore in the middle here can cause accelerated gas ring wear. So we'll get into our third one now. Again, very smooth on the bolt support run. Extremely smooth. Now we're into the gas ring run. This is the nicest of the three. This thing is flawless. Let's run down to the bolt tail. A little bit of oil, but beautiful. This is the nicest of the three. All right, we're going to go into bolt number four. So this one's a little rough at the tail. And we're into bolt number four. Let's see what we get. Bolt shoulder. Very clean, very smooth. This is now our gas ring run. I'm losing some of my bore scope alignment. There we go. Very smooth. Not as perfect as our last one, but very, very good. All right, now we're going to go into our bolt tail. And right there. Let me try to refocus. Very good. This one has a very good finish as well. Very clean. All right. So these two are my favorite horses so far. This one's last place. Put that one there. All right, now we're gonna get to the last one. All right, bolt support. Very clean, very nice. Oh, that one's a little rough there. Very smooth. 
get into our fast run. Slight line there, but nothing very rough. Not bad. All right, so here's what we have. These were our two very gas efficient green. And this one had a slight, the, the roughest finish of all three. These two were my favorite, but these also had a slightly looser bolt support shoulder and gas ring run. And then this one was about equal with the first one. But again, all these things are very minute details. So something you really don't have to worry a whole lot about, but I like to show it on camera. Sorry, everyone, we had a camera issue. Our battery died, so it wasn't complete with the test because we still have to do our torque or reverse torque test. So let me get my proper bit. We're going to test these. All right. Oh, we forgot to do our carrier length as well. So let me move these over here before we do. Having many of these is throwing me a little bit off, so I apologize. Very good. 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 Actually, it's actually very good for that one as well. Extremely good. And extremely good. <clears throat> and the reason that I checked this. I may not have went into it thoroughly in previous videos, but the length of the carrier is very important. If the carrier is slightly too short, what can happen is, is that allows the carrier to go slightly further forward in the upper receiver when the gun goes in the battery. And that allows the buffer to come further forward than it should, which allows it to make contact with the buffer retainer. It's a bad thing. Um, a couple things can cause buffer retainer contact or damage, one being too short of a carrier, another one being that the buffer detent bore is located in the wrong spot and the last one can actually be the upper receiver if it allows the barrel to sit further forward in the upper it can cause the carrier because what stops the carrier from coming forward is the barrel it hits into it so if the upper receiver allows the barrel to sit sort of further forward this will come further forward and allow buffer retainer to buffer contact so it's important to make sure that you're not too short being a little bit longer is just fine um, but all these meet the uh, specification that I'm looking for so let's go over to the vise Let's try example number one. Let's get this thing up to 30. All right, 30 inch pounds, no movement. All right, let's go to the next one. No movement. No movement. These are the ones with the YFS fasteners. No movement. That's four that passed. No movement. All five passed my reverse torque test. Let's go ahead, since we're going to tear them off, let's see what they can endure. Let's go up to 40. And normally, ones that are installed with the proper amount of torque and have sufficient staking will usually break loose at about 45 to 50 inch pounds on this type of wrench in reverse. No movement. All right, we're at 40. Let's go up to 45. No movement. Fifty. It's actually like 52. Let's back it off. 50 inch pounds. No movement. Pretty good.
60. Still no movement. Let's max this thing out. It goes up to 65 inch pounds. 65 inch pounds. Oh, there it went. So installed very well. We can go ahead and try all of them to see if they're all going to do it just for the integrity of the video. So that one cut loose. Let's try the YFS. Let's back this down now since the other ones didn't break. Let's do... Let's be fair and do these all at 50 and then we'll step it up again. inch pounds no movement let's do this one at 50 no movement nope this goes to show that they are installing these properly those that want doubtful about everything. You can see that there's five separate examples here. We're going to go up to 60. All right, let's see if this one will cut loose at 60. Oh, the YFS cut loose at 60. All right, we'll put that one far off to the right. So this one cut off at 60. This was 65. Let's do this one. Oh, that one had one click and then cut loose. And then that one cut loose. Still very good. So two at 60, one at 65. Pass. Pass. Two at 65. Two at 60. Let's see which horse wins. 60 inch pounds wins. So we have three that did a reverse brake test at 60 inch pounds. Very, very good still. And then these two held out a little bit longer to 65 inch pounds. Overall, fantastic uh, physicals for these five carriers and the LMT bolt. One of my longer videos, but I wanted to be thorough since we're doing five separate examples here. I think across the board they were pretty consistent. We had some that had slightly better internal finishes on the three bore um, slight variations in the gas key dimensions when we gauged it but overall very consistent there was only an inconsistency of 0 0.001 between three of the carrier three bores and these other two so i hope you guys found this video educational and thanks for watching